Hi and welcome back. In this video, we are going to do something a little bit different. In the last video, I mentioned that we were going to learn about interfaces in Go, but I'm actually going to deviate from that and do something a little bit different. So in this video, we are going to actually solve an algorithm question. And the reason I'm doing that is because when you go for a job as a software engineer or a software developer, a lot of times you'll get coding tests or coding questions, whether it be on your own computer or on a whiteboard. And the map or hash map is very important because a lot of those questions revolve around using that as the optimal solution because of how fast and quick it is to look things up, to look things up and add things actually. So I wanted to solve this question to show a practical case where you could use a map to help you solve a coding question. So I'm on HackerRank. Um, I like this site for doing practice problems whenever I was practicing for coding interviews. And I was looking through the questions and I saw, came, or I came across this one and I noticed that I could use a map to solve this. So uh, we are going to read through the problem and implement a solution. So let's read through the problem quickly. The problem states, we define the distance between two array values as the number of indices between the two values. Given A, find the minimum distance between any pair of equal elements in the array. If no such value exists, print negative 1. For example, if the array A includes 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, there are two matching pairs, 3 and 2. Right here, there's a 3 pair and a 2 pair. The indices of the threes are 0 and 4. So that means the distance between them is 4, because 4 minus 0 is 4. The indices of the two I, I mean, of the twos are 1 and 3, so their distance is 2, because 3 minus 1 is 2. So we need to create write a function that will do this and give us the smallest of the distances. So complete the minimum distance function in the editor below. It should return the minimum distance between any two matching elements. The minimum distance has the function has the following parameters. A, which is an array of integers. Input format, first line contains an integer n, which is the size of the array, and the second line contains n separated integers. Then there's constraints, this is the output. Um, put a single integer denoting the minimum distance in A. If no such value exists, print minus one. So after reading through this very quickly, um, I'm sure you guys, I'm sure some of you do not fully understand the question. I had to read it like two or three times to fully understand it. But um, after looking at their example, it makes a lot of sense. So let's look through their example here and their explanation. So in this example, if they give us this array of six values, this is what this first input six represents, the six array values. 7, 1, 3, 4, 1, and 7. We can see that there are two pairs, one being the two sevens and another pair being the two ones. So now looking at the explanation here, they're starting with the first pair of ones here, so we will we'll, we'll do the same. So no, so if you see the two ones here, the first one is at in index 1 and the second one is at index 4. So that means the distance between them is 3 because 4 minus 1 is 3, or the absolute value of 1 minus 4 is 3. Um, remember, array indexes start counting at 0, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, if you look at the 7s, the first 7 occurs at index 0, and the last one occurs at index 5. So 5 minus 0, or absolute value of 0 minus 5, gives us 5. So, that, so now that we calculate the minimum distance between all the pairs in this array, uh, the, which is 3 and 5, we want our function to return the smallest of those minimum pairs, which is 3, because 3 is larger than 5, which is why our output is 3 in this case. So if you still don't fully understand it, um, pause the video here, read it over again, and also, I want you to try to solve it yourself. And you, and for, So for my solution, I did use a map, but you, probably, you might be able to solve it without a map, so go, or you definitely can. You don't have to. So like I said, pause it, read it over again, try to solve it yourself, and then unpause the video, and we will take a look at my solution to solving this algorithm question. 
All right, so welcome back. Um, hopefully you took the time to read it over to fully understand what we're trying to do here and even possibly have solved it yourself. So let's go over my solution that I will be implementing for this question, this algorithm question. And um, I, like I said, I used the map in this case. And I'm just going to type out my solution first and then go over my algorithm once I have everything typed out. And verify that it passes all their test cases. So bear with me for the silence, um, or you can fast forward up to you. All right, oh, there's my solution, my algorithm for solving this question, and let's see if it works. First of all, I'll make sure there's no syntax errors. Uh, let's see, there is something on line 18, I believe. Let's see, oh, I put a dot, not a comma, okay. All right, let's see. Okay, cool. So the sample cases are good. Let's see if it passes all the test cases. And boom. Okay, so my algorithm solved all the test cases. Nice. All right, so let's take a look at my algorithm um, step by step and see what I did here. Now, I created a map that has a key of a 32-bit integer and a value of a 32-bit integer. And then I also create a integer 32 type slice called distances. And so they give, they pass in this array, right? For example, this one here, let's say, 713417 is what they pass into here. So that's A. So what I'm doing is I'm looping through A and I'm seeing if our map contains that value in the current iteration of A. So let's walk through this for loop by um, iteration by iteration. Uh, let me pull up a notepad real quick so we can see. So we're just gonna assume we're, we're using this case up here, right? So this is, this is A right here. So in the first iteration here, we're looping through the whole array A. So in the first iteration here, I is equal to zero. So we're right here right now. So this line here, val comma okay, my map, blah, 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 okay. So val is equal to 
the value of uh, the map given the key, this key. And for the key, we're passing in a at i, which is a at 0 in the first iteration. So we're, so we're saying what the value is at my map with the key of the value of 7. So value is actually going to get the value of 0 because there is nothing there. So you're getting the 0 value. But the OK there, this is the important part. This OK checks to see if that key exists. And since it does not exist, OK is equal to false, which means that this if statement doesn't execute and we go to the else. So now what happens is that in our map, we are assigning the key 7 here, the value of the index that it's at, which is 0. So, so let's look over here. So this was my map initially, empty, blank, nothing. Now that we just added something there, this is what, all right, so this is that iteration zero in the beginning. Um, iteration zero, my map start. Start uh, means the start of the iter iteration. At the start, it's blank. And then end will be at the end of the iteration. So at the end of the iteration, we added an entry. So now in our map, we have this one pair here of 7, 0. 7 being the key and 0 being the value. Because we pass in as the key here as the value 7, a at 0, which is 7. And the, we assign that value, I mean that this value to this key, um, the index, i, which is 0. So now, um, since we haven't reached the end of the array a, we go to the next iteration. So at iteration 1, in the beginning, at the start, my map looks like this. With We have this one entry with one key pair value here. So let's see here. So now i is 1, right? So at the array at 1, we have this value. So value here, VAL, has the value of 1. And then if you check here, my map, for the key of 1, it's not there. So OK here would be false, so the if statement does not execute, and we jump to the else. So now what we do is we add that 1 into our map as a key, and assign that key the value of the index of 1, which is 1. So at the end of iteration, um, i equals 1, our map now looks like this. And now we go to iteration i equals 2. So in the beginning of the iteration, our map looks like this. So at i equals 2, we have the value of 3. So since 3 is not in our map, so if statement does not execute, we go to the else and we add 3 to the map. So at the end of iteration 2, my map will look like this. So I have a key of 3 with its index value of 2. Now we go to iteration 3. In the beginning, this is what our map looks like. Okay. So at iteration 3, or i equals 3, let's see what we have. 0, 1, 2, 3. We have the value of 4. 4 is not in the map, so this if statement does not execute. We go to the else, and what we do is just add into our map the key of 4 and its index value, which is 3. Now we go to iteration 4. Now it gets a little more interesting, because we finally get to see what happens now when it is in the map. So at the beginning of iteration 4, this is what we have in our map here. Oh, wait, nope. We have this. I'm missing this. OK, there we go. OK, so at i equals 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, it's the value of 1. So value has the value of 1. Now, if we look in the map for the to see if there's a key with the value of 1, 
There is, right here. There's a key of value, there's a key of one with the value of one. So that means this OK is true, which means our if statement executes, and now we execute this line of code here. And here, what we do is take the current index, which is four, because that's where this one is, and we subtract that by the value of the one key in our map, which is one. So what we have now is four minus one, right? And I'm taking that value and I'm appending it to our distance slice here. This distance slice is for me to keep track of all the distances for every pair. So initially our distance slice is empty, right? So let me actually add that here too. It's empty. But now at the end of it, our distance slice has the value appended to it of four minus one, which is three. So this is what is in our distance slice now, and our map is unchanged. Our map at the end of the iteration still looks the same. But our distance slice now is value of three. So now we move to iteration five. At the start, this is what our map looks like. And this is what our distances slice looks like. So at i equals five, let's see what we have. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. We have the value of seven. So let's see. At if we check our map for a key of seven, it exists. It has the value of zero. So that means value is zero. Okay is true. So distances, I mean so this if statement gets executed. And so what we're going to append to our distances slice now is i, which is five, minus the value, which is zero. So what we appended here is five, because five minus zero is five. So this is what our distances slice looks like, and our map is unchanged, because we did not add anything to it. So um, that's the end of our for loop here, because we looped through the whole array A. So now I have a variable called minimum, which is going to be holding the minimum value in the distance slice. Initially, I set it to the value of 0. And like the question said, if there are no pairs, or no pair exists, then we should return minus 1, which is what this if statement is for. Because if our distances array has nothing in it, then we've had no pairs. So I just set min equals to minus one, and that's what's returned. But if the distances array does have something, we need to find the smallest value inside that distances slice. And Go does not have a built-in min function, so I had to write my own. And it's simple. All I did was so select the first element in our distances slice to be the temporary minimum value. And then I looped through the whole distances array and if there's a smaller value found, then the minimum value is now equal to that new small value, which gets returned. So this is a pretty easy, straightforward question. If you took the time and looked and read it over and just looked through the example. Now, like I said, you did not have to use a map to solve this, but I did as a way of keeping track if a number uh, a, as a way of keeping track if a number was already seen in the array for tracking pairs pretty much. So um, hopefully this gives you a little bit of insight on why maps are important and they can be useful in helping solve these kind of coding questions for job interviews. So um, in the next video we will uh, get back to Go and learn about interfaces. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.